You know, for, the, for those that don't know, I'm from a small, small country town in Indiana, uh, Danville, Indiana. There's about two stoplights. And, you know, that's what we call a rock fight. And, again, it, and I knew it wasn't going to be pretty. Um, it was going to be ugly at times. But I was really, really proud of our guys um, for handling the adversity that we went through in the game. You know, obviously we got off to a great start. Uh, we were able to get Jeremiah Tolman in foul trouble early, and we were able to take advantage of that. Uh, which I thought was big. You know, we got to learn. We got to be able to close the first half a lot better than what we did. I think we had a 15-point lead with about 4:30 left in the in the first half, and then they went on an 8-0 run um, towards the end of the half. I should have probably called a timeout a little bit earlier to break up that run. So that's on me. Um, but I but I was really proud, and I told our guys yesterday in practice and and, and today before the game. You know, I wanted to see how we were going to respond to adversity, and. It was we had not really faced it up until this point in the season. And uh, I thought our huddles were really good towards the end of the game. I thought there was a calmness um, within those huddles, even though we were down. Um, really proud of the way we were able to execute down the stretch of the uh, end of the second half to force overtime. Um, I thought that was good, and I think that's a really positive sign for moving forward. Obviously, you know, we'd like to make some more shots. I thought we had some good looks. Uh, we got to be able to knock those in, but, you know, we did end up with 10 kills on the defensive end. And, and defense went, can win, can win a lot of games. And I think that's got to be the identity, obviously, of our team um, moving forward. Coach, what, what do you think this says about your team? You know, the, the old adage is good teams find a way. <clears throat> what do you, you kind of take away from this? It was a game of toughness. You know, C Coach Martin at Missouri does a tremendous job, and his teams always, always play tough. You know, we played them a couple times when they when he was at Tennessee, and then obviously here here with Missouri. And you know, I got a lot of respect for him, and I and I knew this game was going to come down to toughness. You know, who's going to win the, win the war? You know, all the rebounds, all the loose balls at the end of the game, defense. And I, I thought, you know, even though we weren't shooting well, to be able to see our guys not attach um, our offensive inability to make shots to our defensive effort. Our guys kept on playing hard, even through you know, a lot of misses <laughs> on the offensive end. And, and uh, it was a game of toughness. And so I'm really proud of the way our guys responded. Can you put your finger on why the team struggled so much in the half court with shooting? I can't, Shannon. You know, like, again, like I've said this before, you know, like Golden State Warriors have always made a bunch of threes, right? They have Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Kevin Durant, and all those guys. And all of a sudden, they don't have those guys. They look a little bit different. And, you know, again, we, we just have to have that know who we are and, and what the identity. We had some wide open looks, some wide open. We will take those shots. I told our guys, step in, shoot them with confidence after the ball's been reversed. we got to get rid of a few of those threes, especially when the, the ball hasn't been reversed or the ball hasn't been inside. I think that's really important. Um, but I think for the most part, without watching film yet, I thought we had a lot of good looks. And our guys, again, it's like I said, don't, don't be tight. You know, you got to take the open shot. And again, I got confidence in those guys. You mentioned after last game that Jason Carter said he didn't have his legs under him. But uh, what do you think of him tonight? Finished with a double double and really made some differences there. Yeah, I thought he played really hard. You know, he he uh, he pursues the ball. You know, he rebounds. He gives us a different look on the glass. When when you see the team, the size of Missouri and the athleticism, we need a guy like Jason at the four. And uh, I thought he played slower, started to play a little bit slower. I thought the first couple games back that he got, came back from injury, I thought he was playing a little too fast. Um, he played a lot slower tonight. He had a couple extra pivots, landed on two, uh, which, which was good to see. But he, he can be a big impact player for us. There's no question about that. For as rough as it was offensively, when you guys needed buckets, Paul Scruggs comes up big. Najee hits a three to send it to overtime. And then you guys go eight for 10 at the foul line in overtime to kind of seal it. I mean, that's got to be pleasing for all the other kind of ugliness that, that was on display tonight. Yeah, you know, I, th I thought, again, Paul made some big plays. Najee made some big plays down the stretch. And we tried to keep the ball in the middle third of the floor and, and let Najee kind of play off ball screens because Jeremiah Tillman was playing so far back. I mean, he was dang near at the charge circle um, playing off of Tyreek. And, and uh, I thought Najee overall did, did some really good things out of the middle ball screen uh, towards the end of the half and, and into overtime as well. November basketball kind of is what it is. And, and you haven't been a head coach here very long, but you've been a coach for a, for a while. How long before a team plays the way its coach wants it to play? It takes time. You know, I, I think it's a uh, – the season is a marathon. You know, how, 
how you look right now can be totally different how you are at the end of the season. And, and I think that's how we were last year. Right? I think we were much, much better at the end of the year than we were at the beginning of the year. And, you know, sticking to the process, understand that, again, it's all about just getting better every single day. You know, continue to add to our defensive system, our offensive system. Try to continue to, like, you're trying to figure out your team a little bit as well. You know, what you can run down the stretch, um, how you close the first half. We've got to be a lot better in that area as well, like I said earlier. Um, he's trying to just figure out your team because every team's different. And I know we got four returners that played a lot last year, but adding Jason and, and Bryce and Damir and Zach, we got a lot of new guys as well. So just trying to figure out the rotations and figuring out what to run, especially down the stretch. Uh, could you take us through the last, like, 19.4 after Najee hit the shot? Do you had, had a couple fouls to give? What, 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 how do yeah. you communicate that? To you know, I thought we, uh, number one, I, I was really proud of the execution. That's a play. You know, we, we actually stole it from Villanova, right? You know, if you remember, Villanova hit the, hit the national championship game winner, yeah. right, on that shot Chris Jenkins hit, beat, beat Carolina with that. So um, I was really proud of the way we were able to execute it on the fly. Um, which, which was good by Quentin and Najee up at the top of the key. Uh, but I thought, you know, we were able to kind of uh, just tell our guys, we had, we, I think we had about 16, or no, we had five team fouls, maybe even four. So we were going to try to be really aggressive on the side. You know, they called timeout on the side, and we were going to go in di diamond on the side, which is what we call it, try to make it a tough inbound pass, and then let the clock go down. I told those guys, hey, make a play on the ball, obviously. You know, but like, let's reach, just be aggressive. We got plenty of fouls to give. And uh, we were able to kind of shrink down that shot clock or clock all the way down to five seconds, I believe, when they had the UOB play. Uh, Paul only had one full practice and he played 40 minutes. I mean, what kind yeah. of a, a little grit there? Paul's a tough kid. He is a tough kid. He, he, he nobody's going to tell him he wasn't playing in that game tonight. And, uh, you know, Paul is, is uh, he's a warrior. You know, you can't keep him off the floor. I mean, he's, he did a lot of good things for not, and again, his rhythm's been a little bit messed up. He hadn't practiced in about a week. Uh, but I thought he did some good things, and, and we'll continue to learn from film on, on the other areas he needs to improve. So, you know, today was a little bit of an ugly game, um, but fast break wise, this goes has had a 10 0 advantage. How confident are your team now in transition on fast breaks? I think good. We got to be able to get easy ones, whether that's in transition before the defense is set, you know, whether that's on the offensive glass, whether that's off a turnover, you know, where we get a live ball turnovers, get a steal. Uh, we got to be able to convert on those three on two, two on one opportunities in order for us to be good. Last year in close games, you used to talk about guys' eyes and huddles and how that would kind of tell you everything that you needed to know. What, what were their eyes saying tonight when that when kind of the game was on the line? Yeah, you know, I thought going into the last, you know, the tenth four four minute war, I think it was about three forty or whatever it was on the clock in the second half. We were down, I want to say four, um, but I, I thought I thought we had a great huddle. There was a calmness in the huddle. Uh, you could hear Quentin's voice, you could hear Tyreek's voice, and it's like I told those guys, hey, we win this last four minute war here, we can at least for, force overtime or win the game, and and. Uh, I thought our guys, you could tell they were still connected. And again, like I said, we weren't that way early on last year. When we would hit adversity, like when we did at, at Missouri last year, we got off to a 9-3 to three start, and then we, we unraveled. And again, I think that's the true test of a team, and I thought our guys did a great job tonight. Um, you're three games into the season. How do the new rule changes affect what's going on, the, the longer three and the shot clock? I think the longer three is affecting – Bas college basketball all across, you know, across the board. You know, it's a uh, – you're seeing percentages go down a little bit. And I think once guys get more comfortable out there, uh, I, think, I think you'll start to see that it'll, that'll diminish over the years. But for right now, I think that's been the biggest rule change. You know, going back to 22nd uh, shot clock off of an offensive rebound or whatever, I think that's good for the game. It creates more pace, creates more possessions in the game, which I think is a good thing. The flopping rule is really tough. And I've told the officials, and I, I hate it for them, I think it's a hard, it's a really, really difficult rule to officiate. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Sorry, I'm, I'm sure you would have liked it to be a little less stressful, but a pretty good birthday present tonight from you guys? This is all I wanted for my <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Thank you.